Hi, this is Alon from the Cyclinity SDK team. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can easily customize your pages using custom attributes. This feature existed in previous versions of Cyclinity for taxons and forms. Now its power is available also for pages. I'll start with a simple example showing off the magic of the feature in action. Then I'll break the magician's oath, which I haven't actually taken and I'll reveal how to configure this feature and make the magic happen. Here I'm running a clean instance of Sitefinity. Uh, let's navigate to Pages. I have two pages created already. Uh, the first is Page with pop-up and the second is Page without pop-up. When I open the first page, uh, we have a small hello alert popping up. The second page loads with nothing, no alerts are popping up. Pages don't currently support custom fields. This trick is using a new feature called custom attributes. If we go to the first page actions, title and properties, and we'll scroll down, you'll see that I have a field here which is not part of the page's standard fields. It's titled hello message. It contains the text which was displayed in the alert box for this page. If I change this text, for example, to Hello Sitefinity and save my changes, now when I open the page again, the pop-up will display the new value. If I uh, edit the second page, Title and Properties, on the Advanced section I'll scroll down again we'll see that we have the field here, but it's actually not populated. If I populate it with some text and save changes, then open the page, we'll see we have the text displaying in the alert. Now let's see how this is done. Actually adding the attributes to the page and setting its value is done without involving code at all. Once the attribute is configured and populated, you can use it in your code uh, quite easily, and for that the possibilities are endless. I have another project here named Custom Attributes Revealed. So first let's open it in the browser. This project doesn't have any pages yet and doesn't have any custom attributes configured yet. So let's start by adding a custom attribute. In order to do that I'll have to navigate under Administration to Settings, then click Advanced, then I'll find the Content View node under which there is a controls node. Here we have Sitefinity's configurations for views which are used across the back end. What we want to do is to add our custom attribute fields to the front end pages section so that we can edit front end pages and manipulate them. So under front end pages we see the views. When we create a page the view named front end pages create is being used and when we are editing a page's properties, the front-end pages edit view is being used. So let's start with the front-end pages create, which is the view used for creating a new page. Under sections, we can see the sections containing controls which are used on, the, on pages creation. Let's go to the advanced section, and here there's a list of fields. These fields are the standard fields which come built in in the system um, on the page creation view. Let's add a new field here. This field will be of type text, so we'll have to find the text field definition element. You can also use boolean fields, multiple selection, or tags. The important fields here are the field name and data field name. So first let's give this field a name. Let's call it Sitefinity demo field. I'll copy this value and I'll paste it in the data field name. Just that I have to give here a special prefix called attributes. Dot the name of the field that I'll be using. This will automatically add the field value to a collection of strings, namely custom attributes, which are attached to the page node. I can also find the field title caption and fill it. Now I'll go down and save changes. 
Now, since I've defined this custom attribute on the pages create screen, it will be a, it will appear only on the page creation screen, but not when I edit an existing page. So I'll have to repeat this action again. I'll have to go to front end pages edit view, then again to the sections. Oh, sorry, to the sections. And let's go again to the advanced option sections. Of course, I can add my own section here if I like. And on the fields, again, I'll create a new text field with the text field definition element. I'll name it, I'll give it the same name so that we'll see that actually we're manipulating the same field. and the field name will also match and the title again we can also add a description here which will also appear in the UI again we'll save changes and now our custom attribute is added to both the view and create uh, to both the create and edit views of the page. So let's go back and create a page. I'll call this page pop-up page. And if I scroll down here to the advanced options, you can see already the demo field is here. Let's just write some text, create the page. I'm not going to add any more content to the page, I'm just going to publish it for now. Now if I go again to the page, actions, title and properties, now we're actually opening the edit page view and on the advanced option <coughs> we can see the field. The data here comes from the same source and the same field by its name so that the we can see the value here is matching what we saw in the page creation screen and for this view we added a descript description text so we can see it here save changes and now when we open the page actually nothing happens because we have the attribute which is already populated with a value but the page is actually not utilizing it so let's write some code that will utilize this I'll open the solution uh, of the Sagefinity web application in Visual Studio. What I'm going to do now is register a client script block which will inject a piece of JavaScript into my page. I'm going to do this when the page pre-render com is complete. So I'm going to subscribe to the page's pre-render complete event using Sagefinity's event hub. In order to make the subscription on a good timing, I'm going to subscribe to another event called Bootstrapper Initialized. I'm going to first add to my project a global ASX file. And here first I'm going to add a bootstrapper initialized event handler. Okay, now that we caught the initialization of a uh, Sifinity's bootstrapper, we're going to check whether we are on a uh, whether the current command is bootstrapped. In which case, I'm going to subscribe to this to the pages pre-render complete event using uh, Sagefinity's event hub. The event is I page pre-render complete event. and I'm going to define a small method here which is going to call to be called let's 
let's add this method here. The event is again the IP render complete event. And now the first thing I'm going to do is fetch the value of the custom attribute that I just created for this page. So the value is going to come from the event data which contains an instance of my page node. Now the page node already contains a collection called attributes and I can just find my attribute by its name. Let's return in case our value is empty. Otherwise, I'm going through the event data to the page itself. And here, under client script, I'm going to register client script block. This method has three arguments. First is the type of the holder. Second is the key for this script. And the third is the script itself. So I'm going to inject here some very simple JavaScript. And in this script, I'm going to just pop up an alert very simply. Actually, let me correct here the type. The correct type is text slash JavaScript. Now I'll build it. And now if I go back to the pages and open my pop-up page again, you can see the script is now active on the page and it takes its value from the custom attribute we just defined. So this was a quick demo of how you can easily customize your page using custom attributes. Most of the work of adding the attributes to the page is done through configuration and the UI. The manipulation of the attribute is in your own hand and it's pretty much endless.